what you're going to do, you're going to go to a website called Pearson View. It'll be home.pearsonview.com. And once again, I will put links in the description box below. First thing you want to do is you want to go click on this link where it says for test takers. You're going to click on that. You're going to click on schedule an exam. You're going to click on that link. It's going to take you to this page right here. You're just going to scroll down going to give you some useful information about all kind of wonderful things going on. You're going to want to click on schedule your exam right here. Then from there, it's going to give you some more useful information. Then it's going to say A to Z program list. You're going to want to click on the letter C for CompTIA. Then from there, it's going to present this drop down list. And then you're going to just scroll until you see CompTIA, which is right here. You're going to select CompTIA. And then from here, you are going to go about either signing in if you already have an account or you're going to create an account. For this part of the video, I'm just going to be showing you guys a bunch of screenshots because some of this stuff requires me to put my personal information in there and I'm not going to be showing you all my personal information. Like I said earlier, you're going to either sign in if you already have an account or you're going to go ahead and create an account. And here's a screen showing you how to sign in. Like I said, if you don't have an account, you're going to go over here and create a web account if you are a new user. After that, you're going to be looking at the dashboard and then it's going to present an option for you to view exams. You're going to click on that button right there. And then from here, you can type in the exam that you're looking for or you just start scrolling down looking for certain exams. In this particular example, I've taken screenshots of the CompTIA IT Fundamental Certification Exam. And this is the one that we're going to focus on just for this demonstration only. All right. So I went through and I found the CompTIA Fundamentals Exam and here it is listed right here. The FC0 U-61. That is the latest and greatest CompTIA IT Fundamentals Exam. I click on that. Now, here is going to ask you, how do you want to take your exam? So you're going to have two options that I'm familiar with. I'm not exactly sure what this I have a private access code is referring to, but you're either going to be taking this at a local testing center or you're going to have the option to take it at your house. So we're going to go through both steps real quick to kind of show you what all this looks like to help you set up your exam. So in this example, we're going to go through looking at scheduling an exam for a local testing center. You would select local testing center, then you hit the next button going to ask you the language, obviously English. Well, that's what I speak, but you would select whatever language that you are most comfortable with. You're going to hit next. Then it's going to show you the exam details. So it's going to tell you what exam you're taking, the FC0-U61 CompTIA IT Fundamental Certification Exam. It's going to show you the price, $123, and it's going to show you the language that you are taking the exam in, and then you're going to hit next. Then it's going to ask you some information regarding as to whether or not you are a veteran using some government benefits like your post 9-11 bill. If you do use those benefits, you're going to hit yes. And then it's going to ask you to input some more information. If not, you're just going to check no and then hit next. From there, it's going to ask you to input your address. And then from there, it's going to populate the closest testing centers to where you currently live. And they will be displayed down here. It'll give a list of names and then it'll actually show you the distance from whatever residence that you uh, typed in up here to where the closest testing center is to you. And then you would just select whatever testing center that you want. And it says you can select up to three test centers to compare the availability. And after you select the testing center, it's going to ask you to select a date. Now, here is where you might run into some issues due to all of the things that are taking place in the world concerning social distancing. So normally you would go here. It would have a bunch of dates for you to pick. You would select the date, select the time, then go through the motions of paying for your certification and booking your appointment. But over here, well, it's not presenting me any options. So I think I did a screenshot for why can't I find an available appointment? And I did. And this is the window that's going to populate. It's going to say the test center chosen has no available appointment times or is not open. Select a different test center. The exam delivery dates are not available. Check for check another month. The exam authorization window is not applicable for the month being searched or the exam may be available for delivery at your home or office through OnView. Consider selecting a different delivery option. OnView is going to be the online testing. So with this particular exam, I believe they're only offering this thing online due to all the social distancing taking place out there.
All right. So with that being said, now we're going to go back and do the at home testing or the at home office options that they have presented right here. So if you select at home office, it's going to tell you this right here. It says, are you going to be testing on this device and network? If so, you're going to have to run a pre-check to verify compatibility of your device and network before planning to take this exam in your home or office. If you skip, be sure to do a full system test before the day, before test day to avoid lost exam fees and launch the delays. So what you're going to do, you're going to want to hit the run, the pre-checks, and then this window is going to pop up right here. And it's just going to test your microphone, your internet speed, and your webcam. At the time I was taking these screenshots, I didn't have my microphone plugged in. That's why I got a big X right here. But if I did, then whatever mic you're using, you're going to have to get a green in order for you to be fully compatible. And then you would just hit the rerun button and bam, you should be good to go. After you do that, it's going to ask you to agree to some online exam policies. So you're going to get a couple pairs paragraphs here that you're going to have to read or scan through and then select the check boxes so that you can proceed. After you do all that, we're going to get back to the options that we already saw. It's going to ask you to select the language. It's going to tell you the price and the exam and what language you're taking uh, the exam in. It's going to ask you if you're a vet or not. And then it's going to ask you to select the date over here. You just select whatever dates are not grayed out. And then it also says to avoid any issues on exam day, we recommend checking into your exam 30 minutes before the scheduled start time. This allows optimal preparedness, but does not guarantee an early admittance or start time. I would say check in at least 45 minutes to an hour early. That way you can make sure everything is good to go. Your computer's up and running. You got good internet. You told the wife, the husband, the kids, or the brother, the sisters, and the dogs to get out, give you your piece so you can do your thing up in here. Make sure everything is good to go because what's going to happen is if you miss this exam time, guess what? Your voucher is bye-bye. You don't get another one. It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. So you're going to want to make sure that you make this appointment and do not forfeit this voucher for any reason or whatever. After you do all that, you select a day. It's going to ask you to select a time. Morning, afternoon It's going to present a bunch of stuff. Change the times. You can show them in the, the uh, 24 hour time. And then it's going to say it's going to take you to your cart. So over here, it's going to say, hey, you got this exam. It's going to be taken in this language. This exam is X amount of minutes long. This is the day. This is the time. You can change the appointments at this point if you want. And this is the price. So you could just totally remove this thing altogether. And then you have the option to add another exam if you want to add another exam. You're going to scroll down on that same window. Then it's going to give you your confirmation, contact information, your name, your telephone. You can edit all that stuff up. It's going to tell you the price of the exams. You're going to go to proceed to check out down here. It's going to pop up this window that you're going to have to agree. It's going to tell you to comp to your testing policies. It says uh, admission policy. Please note this exam is proctored in English only. There is an option for there is not an option for local language proctoring at this time. It says before the exam is visit the comp to your online proctoring page and review information on exam policies and procedures, system requirements and system tests. Complete the required system tests from the same computer and in the same location you'll be using on exam day. Corporate firewalls often cause issues while trying to take your exam. Please consider taking your exam in a setting without a corporate firewall. So try to take it at home if you can. But then it says review the identification requirements below. All right, so here's some of the ID requirements. So basically, you're going to have to show at least one valid form of unexpired government issued personal ID. The government issued ID must have your signature and a photo. So here's some examples. You're going to have to have a valid unexpired passport, driver's license, military ID, some type of national or local ID or registration card, such as a green card, a visa, permanent resident. You're going to need to actually show that to the proctor. Then here's some other information pertaining to minors who are going to be taking the test. So for candidates who are 17 years of age and under, please note that the minor must have guardian authorization for each testing event. In addition, the minor must have a single form of photo ID, such as a school ID, and the guardian must be present during the check-in process and willing to show a proper government-issued ID. So the stuff that we just talked about. Now, here is the important stuff for exam day that you need to focus on. The day you take your exam, you're going to log into this account right here, www.pearsonview.com slash slash on view. You're going to click on your scheduled exam under purchased online exam. 
exams. You're going to click begin exam and follow the on-screen prompts to complete the check-in process. Once you have completed the check-in process, you will be contacted by a proctor to begin your exam. Now, please note that you are required to have a clean and clutter-free workstation. During check-in, the proctor will ask you to perform a room and desk scan using your webcam and will inspect any materials near your website. So make sure you have a clean desk with nothing but your computer on it for the most part. That's it. No notes, no sticky tabs, no nothing. They are going to want you to take that webcam and scan the desk and scan. Make sure you don't have anything on your walls because if you get caught cheating, guess what? Your voucher's gone and you failed a test and you got to do this whole process all over again. All right. So after you do all of that, it's going to take you to the enter payment and billing page. and It's going to show you exactly how much the exam costs. Now, this is where you are going to enter your voucher number. So whatever your voucher number is that came to you in the email, you're going to put that number up in here or some type of promotion code, but we're just going to assume you got a voucher. And once you hit apply, it's going to erase this price. Is it? Or it's going to change it. So let's just say you got a voucher to cover the whole $123. You hit the code, bam, this thing turns to zero. Or if you got a voucher saying that you get the, the uh, exam for 50% off, this thing will turn to whatever 123 divided by two is, about 60 something dollars, right? Then you hit apply. And then from there, it's just going to ask you to input your purchase, your credit card information, assuming you have a balance that you have to pay. So like I said over here, if you got it for 50% off, you put the exam code in and then next thing you know, this thing changes to like 60 bucks. Go to this page where you're just going to have to pay $60 into your credit card information and all that great, wonderful stuff. And then hit next. And after you hit next, you booked your exam and you are on your way. And just to reiterate, the day you go take your exam, this is what this is where you're going to go. You're going to go to pearsonview.com slash comp to you slash on view. And these are the steps that you need to take so that you can take your exam. Like I said, please try to check in 45 minutes to an hour early. I know they say 30 minutes, but just give yourself a little wiggle room to make sure everything is nice and clean. Nobody's bothering you. Your system is fully functional. Your internet is good to go so that you can take this exam without any problems whatsoever. Because if you miss this exam time, guess what? But you just your voucher is gone and you have to go through the entire process again and pay for this exam or get another voucher somehow, some way so that you can get this certification. All right. So before we go, there's one final page that you guys want to go check out. You want to go check out the CompTIA candidate testing policies. You can do a simple Google search for CompTIA candidate testing policies, and it's going to give you some extra information pertaining to whether or not you have a disability and if special accommodations could be made for you, whether or not English is a second language for you, and if they can make accommodations for you, how they go about scoring the exam, the content of the exam, the retesting, whether or not you need to provide a photograph, rescheduling, and the cancellation policy. Cancellation policy is very important. It says you must contact Pearson View at least a minimum of 24 hours prior to your exam appointment. Canceling or failing to appear for an exam will result in the forfeiture of your exam fee. So you need to, if you plan on canceling for any reason, you need to do it 24 hours before or else it is what it is. You're going to have to pay for this whole thing all over again, ladies and gentlemen. And that's for rescheduling as well. So like I say, go visit this webpage, Candidate Testing Policies, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest so that you can go out there and successfully pass whatever certification exam that you are taking. <laughs>